this will be the raw render from Daz. Mm -hmm. uh, and this will be something like what we're going to try and achieve. Oh, yeah, look at that. End. Oh, very nice. So it's you can see the difference nice. there between the flat render and the one that has so much more dynamics in it. Yeah. It re really pops out at you as opposed to the, the flat render. Okay, so let's let's think about her makeup. Let's see where we go with that. She's going to be in a forest, so let's look for something foresty. I'm going to be putting one at, uh, LIE on her, so I'll put that on last. Okay. Let's go with this nice red one here. Well, there is no makeup in this one. She comes direct with makeup. Oh, okay. She doesn't have. There is. There was no plain version. Uh, so lips. Let's go with uh, possibly the red lips. Maybe this this one. Uh, yeah, I like that one. Shadow, Match yeah. the eye, eye mm -hmm. shadow, yeah. And I think in the original render, I used green eyes. Uh, so we'll go with that. Brows. We have brow colors. I think we just leave it with the default brows. Uh, okay, so we load in a faint kind of dirt on her face, which is just an extra add-on. One of the tricks that I learned recently, and I didn't know this, is that if you load them on twice, they, it gets darker. You know, oh, it stacks? So, uh, oh, I didn't know that either. Ah. Yeah, it stacks. Yeah, oh, does yeah. it? Look at that. Um, of course, LIEs take a short while to load. Uh, there we go. Um, I'm going to load that on twice. Look at that. They stack. I never thought about this. Yeah, yeah so let, let, let's good. stack it one more time and see what it looks like darker. So compared to some of my characters, this is actually very light detail. I, I often put a lot more dirt and blood and scratches and things like that. Oh, well, your ladies have been through a lot on the battlefield. So yeah, I can, well, I this can is it. <laughs> you're not going to get a pagan goddess who, ju who, who just came out of the shower, really, Indeed. are you? So so there we go. We got we got a bit more kind yeah, of yeah, yeah, I can see it. Uh, now. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. I, I tend to like a shiny skin. So I, I give three options here for, for skin shine. Now, one of the things with a lot of HDR, especially the ones that don't have direct sunlight, they don't show the skin shine very well, you know, the skin glossiness, the specularity. So we might bump that up when once we load in the HDRI. Okay, so I think as far as she, oh, I'll, I'll load in her nail morph there. She's got longer nails now. Yeah. Now I've just got to remember what I used from each of these packages because some of them I only used one or two little things. Okay, from this Deforce Viking outfit from Daz, I just used the the arm bracelet. So we'll pop that on. It's one of my favorite parts, actually, accessorizing the character. Rather, it's than really just, important. It's, so it's really important, important. especially yeah. when you show just the upper body of the character and you just see the face and you think, yeah, that's that's good, but there's something missing. So this is, you know, what? Yeah, the, necklaces, jewelry, armbands, uh, uh, you know, bracelets, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, nose rings. Yes, you know, all these uh, anything like that. But one thing I always forget, and I've forgotten it now, is to load in the navel. Oh, navel, right? Yes. Yeah, I often forget. <laughs> we will forget see that. more of her. Yeah. yeah, it's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's the the basic uh, character setup. Okay, now she has a spear. Mm -hmm. Now this this is actually the hardest part of, of the render. I I found <laughs> I did a lot of work posing the hand and the spear. The customized pose. I the pose I used was by Ensory. And it's a great poses, someone wicked poses. This one, I think, someone wicked pose seven. Now, I did a customized version of that here, which I'll use in a minute, but uh, that's what it looks like. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm gonna find the spear poses. Yes, here we go. So we want it in the right hand. There we go. Uh, now, is it parented? Um, yes, it's parented. Right? Yes, it is hand. parented, and there is a right hand pose. Uh, I take it the S means spear, so we load that in. Let's find out. Maybe it hasn't made much of a difference. <laughs> so I load in the pose that I I made anyway. I customized. Um, let's see what that looks like. Now the spear I found was massive. What we're going to do is we're going to scale that down. <laughs> I'm just going to select the hand here and zoom in on that. Now, one of the problems with these parented props is, depending on the angle they are in the scene, they lose their rotation and translation. They get mixed up. So 
you'd automatically go for X translate, which actually isn't 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 too bad. No, it's good today. It's, it's behaving today. Uh, just get it a little bit more towards the inside of her hand there. So now the next thing uh, that's missing, I believe, is the hair. My favorite hair creators would be Lindy. Mm -hmm. And April, is it April YSH or April-ish? I call her April-ish. Uh, okay, so we're using the Yulani hair. Yulani, beautiful hair, yes. She's yeah, she makes my, great hair. She makes, there's so many, there's like, hair is difficult. It's difficult to find good hair, like great hair. But I find there's literally this, this group of like five to ten hair creators who are spectacular and it's a prillish and linda are both in that group I, I totally agree yeah 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 and she makes great barbarian hair <laughs> she makes quite a bit of it which is is really nice okay so what i'm going to do now jay is i'm going to create a camera and just for now i'll just copy the perspective view and just go to the camera let's pull her into the scene a little bit i'm just going to click out of iray for a little while just while i'm maneuvering things around <laughs> start starting to get a bit sluggish it um, is you're brave i mean I, I could see that with the right mindset at the right uh, level of patience you can actually work quite a while in ira if you don't expect things to change too fast um, yeah like you know if you, then all of a sudden it starts slowing down yeah and, with things like uh, hair and then especially when it comes to posing yeah i totally agree if i turn the headlamp off will we still see her no, there you go. I have to leave the headlamp on for now. But I do, um, I do this in the render settings. There's a way that says never. Yeah. And yeah, I, I tend yeah. to leave that on in my default scene. So it doesn't ever bother me. But it's something that trips up newcomers time and time again. So, yeah. Sometimes I find, find I need the headlamp. And also sometimes I use the headlamp in renders because oh. you, can, you can change the intensity of the headlamp. True. Uh, so it, it can actually work as a really nice fill light. Good point. Yes, if you do it really subtly, if you just need that very, extra, you have to be yeah. very subtle, or it looks like a camera flash. I'm going to bring up the focal length to around about a hundred. That's roughly where we need her. It's going to pop back into iRay, and I'm going to load in the HDRI. So this is this is the Misty Pines HDRI. Okay, so now now we can turn the headlamp off. Righty, we have illumination. Yeah, but yeah. even then, like when you had the headlamp on and if you had turned down the intensity, I can totally see how that would just minimize a little bit of the dark rings. Like, yeah. you know, the default might be too strong, but you, you blend it in. It's, if it's all about subtlety, I can totally oh, see. To zero. This is like having the fill-in flash on your digital camera, really, isn't it? Yeah, there, there's a tiny bit of it there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, exactly. That's and a point, literally... point, point two. Mm -hmm. And it, it looks very natural. Now, you do get the headlamp reflection in the eyes mm -hmm. yes. which, which can be can be handy you know uh but we're going to leave it off for now anyway i'm just thinking uh i think the dome rotation was round about 18. i actually ran through this today that's how i can remember mm -hmm. these things yeah that's pretty close the tree here on the left is what i'm looking at which is in the the original image uh yes just a little bit in there that's pretty close yeah. yeah. You say rotating the environment. I'm just going to rotate Genesis 8 female. Uh, I want her looking directly at the camera. So we said earlier we we're going to bump up the specularity on her. So we're going to go to surfaces and select all the relevant parts, arms, body, ears, uh, face, head, legs. Actually, before I do this, I'm going to load in there's some built-in specularity for the lips so not built in comes with the product herself i'll give the lips some gloss gotcha so okay so we got the lips there so we got the arms body ears face head legs we don't want the lips that's everything i think try it at 100 percent. that's a little bit too much maybe uh bring it down to about 85. i want her to look like she's been She's been running through the forest, chasing an enemy or chasing a wild boar or something like that. Now, something else needs changing is her hair. Her hair isn't right. Uh, I need to change the hair color. And April-ish always comes with lots of colors. 
Hmm. Uh, and the one I'd like to use is the brown blonde. Uh, okay, that's much better. Um, and while I'm in here, actually, I'm just going to up the resolution out because I, I don't understand this, but a lot of hairs come as base resolution. Maybe that means you're not supposed to up the resolution. I don't know, but I always do. I mean, um, I would say that's a, good, that's a good point, actually. I think if the subdivision surface modifier is already applied, but the product loads in with base res, I would imagine yeah. the clothing creator thought it works with uh, with a it, it, it works as is, yeah. If it's not applied, then it, it might be something that they might have done that for a reason. So then it's basically at your own risk to add one or you, uh, one by yourself. I would normally, normally um, change the hair subdivision, render sub, sub, subdivision level to, to three mm -hmm. or possibly even four if wow. it, it's a low res hair. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of them, you know, the fine hairs and that, they, they can be you see a little kinks. bit kind of, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. totally. <laughs> now, just let's check what resolution, render resolution she's at. Now, I would normally render her a four. Hmm. We're not going to be rendering, but this is how I, how I would set it up. This is it's yeah. interesting actually, yeah, that you have the base character that you loaded in, and when you then applied the bits and pieces, she had a sub D level of one, which uh, that's you said this is an eight point one figure. This is good to know yeah. because I would love it if eight point one figures would have a viewport sub D level of one applied and yeah. a render level of something much higher by default because i don't think there's much benefit in having sub d level of two in the viewport mm. it just makes the, point. most computers so much more sluggish and especially if you have that on the clothing and the hair and you think all of a sudden the jump from eight to 8.1 makes it appear as if my computer is no longer capable but it is it's just because of the default sub -D good level. point so, yeah yeah and, and another thing i'd just like to point out the way i do things is this is the default Daz promo resolution for the render. I think the original render of this was 3000 by 3900. Wow, okay. Obviously it takes longer to render, but the quality is so much better when you render. At least, at least try to render twice as big as what you need. The quality is much, much better. And also IRA has a tendency to render artifacts, especially in dark backgrounds or shadows or in hair as well, you get that noise. If you render larger and then when you bring it down to the, was it 1000 by 1300 DAS render size, mm. most of that disappears. Just by up the, the image, by, by making a larger render, you avoid exactly, those kind of Exactly, exactly, exactly. Mm. Also, so, I mean, I, I've noticed that making the picture twice as big doesn't actually mean it needs it takes four times as long to render even no, though that's it doesn't, technically it doesn't. What, what happens really but we're making a picture that isn't twice the size we're making it four times as big so sometimes you make a scene and it renders incredibly fast even if it's really large you know can render in five or ten minutes and you think wow that's really fast and then you can you can make a similar scene another day that takes two hours to render. I, I, I've never gotten my head around that, you know? Same here. So I think there's just one more thing really to do on this. And I adjusted the hair style a little bit. Um, now I, I have made a note of what I actually did on this because it would be too hard to try to recreate. So we have all, all it comes with loads of morphs. <laughs> And she, she also has loads of styles. She always gives all these great styles. As I really appreciate that about her products. But when, I, when yeah. I look at these things as a, as, as a fan, I, all I see is the amount of work that goes into that. I mean, you have to not only make the thumbnails, you have to make them morph. You've got to make sure it works. You've got to test it. And my goodness, there's just so much. Oh, there's a time. lot of work. It's yeah, just time yeah. that goes into this. So.